everyone, my name is Sammy DePasquale and I'm the director of Abara in El Paso, Texas. Um, and we primarily focus on work in El Paso and across the border in Ciudad Juarez in Mexico. Um, and we're, we're involved in three main ways primarily. In uh, border education um, and awareness, um, we host border encounters, which are three to five day experiences on the border, on both sides of the border. Those are all on a hiatus at the moment due to COVID-19. Uh, we're under stay-at-home orders like much of the country, much of the world. Um, then secondly, we're involved in border response. And basically, we are trying to respond to some of the most pressing needs on the border, which over the last year and a half, or actually longer than that, really, but um, that, that's involved supporting shelters for migrants, for asylum seekers. And that started supporting a network of up to 30 churches in El Paso, and then uh, transitioned over to supporting a network of up to about 20 churches um, or organizations over in Ciudad Juarez um, after Remain in Mexico, um, where the migrant protection protocol went into full effect. Um, and then thirdly, we're involved with border connections and trying to connect broadly along the U.S.-Mexico border and along uh, migrant pathways up to the United States from Central America and with others around the world. Um, and, and ultimately, we are really want to see um, or be a part of a movement of people who are trying to reach out to those um, across boundaries. Abara actually means um, a crossing or a river ford um, in Semitic languages like Arabic or in Hebrew. Um, and that's sort of uh, what we hope to be. We hope to be it's sort of like a bridge, um, uh, but like where there's not a bridge where we need to get across a river, um, we would look for a more natural area or a river ford, a crossing where, um, you know, maybe the water's not as turbulent. Um, there might be currents, it might be deep, it might be a little bit dangerous, but still, if we want to get to the other side, then that's our best option is uh, at a river ford. And so that's conceptually really inform sort of how we do our work um, and that we want to reach out um, and build connections and relationships with those maybe who are different than us wherever we are. Um, and it just so happens that this is an amazing place. This is where we are on the border of the U.S. and Mexico and we have so many brothers and sisters who we love on both sides of the border and we love to share um, those experiences and those relationships with other people. Um, this work with Abara um, came out of rootedness in a community in central El Paso through an organization called Ciudad Nueva Community Outreach. Um, we've been located here for about 15 years and have an amazing team on the ground in the community working with youth and families and in community development work um, from a faith perspective, a Christian perspective. Um, and so through that, we've been working with many, many churches in this area, in the El Paso area, and a little bit over in Juarez, and that, though, has really increased through Abara. Now we are work with many, many churches across the border in Juarez. So one of the questions that we were asked is sort of what is happening with churches in this area? And it was amazing when the response was on the El Paso side. We had up to 1,000 people a day for a while being released by ICE from detention, almost entirely seeking asylum. Those were all family units, parents with children or a parent with children. Um, and the response was pretty astounding. Um, it started out primarily a Catholic response. In fact, the Catholic Church has been incredibly um, uh, involved in the area of supporting migrants, especially the most vulnerable, for decades. It's much more recently that Protestant churches, and in particular maybe more evangelical churches, have gotten involved just in the last few years. And so by the end of that network of 30 churches in El Paso, most of those were Protestant and even evangelical churches who were involved in that response. Then almost overnight after Migrant Protection Protocol, um, there was hardly anyone being released into the U.S., and that network sort of fizzled, and it was almost like, there was a uncertainty of what to do, even though the need now was just a mile across the border, or not even, you know, a few blocks across the border into Mexico. Um, and so we, 
as an organization immediately started working with churches more in Mexico. The, the churches in El Paso, some have struggled to try to figure out how to be involved. Um, but many are supporting with donations. Some are going across with groups, um, uh, with food. Of course, right, that this is all sort of the last, uh, you know, six, eight, ten months that it's been over in, in mostly in Ciudad Juarez, but um, just in the last few weeks, of course, everything has changed with COVID-19. So ways that we are trying to support right now, and I believe Blanca will be sharing a little more uh, about this, Blanca Castillo, um, who focuses along with Gustavo, her counterpart, um, over in Juarez for Abara, and they'll be, they'll be, show, they'll be talking a little bit more about the church response in Juarez, which has been tremendous and is a, I think, a, a real lesson to so many of us um, in the United States um, in terms of the hospitality um, and the willingness to sacrifice space and time and resources. And so we are, we are trying to mobilize churches to help support in that effort, whether it's through donations, uh, monetary donations, um, to support the shelters in, in Ciudad Juarez um, with food, um, with different types of scholarship programming for training, with infrastructure projects. Um, that's one way of getting involved. Um, so we were having many groups come and visit. It's, I think, much uh, or very similar to um, what's going on in South Texas and other parts of the border, just in having, ex having opportunities for people to come visit and hear from people and understand holistically what is happening in this context here. Those are some ways for churches to get involved. Um, for those that are not near the border, I think there are so many important um, ways to be involved. And the most important of all is in your own communities. Um, hundreds of thousands of people just in the last few years seeking asylum have arrived in the United States and are in your communities, whether you realize it or not. Um, I know many of you are probably involved, if not, I would suggest the most important thing maybe you could do is really try to investigate in your town, in your city, in your region, where pockets of people are living and uh, many are probably scared and frightened and under the radar and, and especially vulnerable right now during this health crisis. Um, how can you be supporting those in your community? How can you be um, making sure that your church is not neglecting um, those who are suffering, vulnerable, marginalized asylum seekers right now, um, or other migrants who might be in your communities, or those who have lived in the United States for a very long time, maybe, but still under the radar. Um, if you're interested in support along the border, I know there's so many amazing organizations that are doing work and supporting um, the work across the border in Mexico, which is the primary uh, need right now. So that's sort of how we are trying to connect resources to, in particular to Ciudad Juarez and to the churches and the shelters there who are in need. Um, I would say we all need to be praying hard for discernment in how both we personally advocate for changes and for changes in laws and also how do we inform our congregations, how do we inform our denominations um, how, what, what do we have as a faith community to bring to the table? Um, and so I would, I would encourage everybody, all of us, including, you know, myself, it's always a challenge, like how do we, how do we advocate? Um, how do we get involved? How do we support those who are involved? And then I think we can't neglect root causes as well. There are reasons that so many people are arriving on our shores. And it's not just pull factors, but why are people fleeing? What is the violence? What are the underlying circumstances? What is, what is our involvement as a nation in maybe some of the, the situations on the ground that, that have become unstable in Central America? Um, so these are all issues that we try to understand more through uh, this collaboration, um, understanding, learning together, and then leading to response. Um, again, it's Sammy Di Pasquale with Abara, and if you're interested in learning more, our, our Website is abarafrontiers.org. Thank you.